Hi, we're here at Montreal New Tech and Hacking Health with Innovations in Health, and I've just been speaking with one of the startup founders, and Alper Avital, and you are the founder of Neuroscan. That's and right. early detection autism, such an important topic. I loved your presentation. Please tell us about your company. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I've known people who've been touched by autism, and now it's one in 60, and in boys it's one in 40. So it's a really important problem, and we found the most important thing is early treatment. There's no real, this is the first diagnostic test that can tell within babies being a few months old. So three, six months old, you can tell whether they're at high risk or not. So it's a mobile device, uh, mobile software, where you scan the baby's eye movements and head movements, and algorithms are run on it, and you can tell whether they're at low, medium, or high risk. And then you can refer them for early treatment. And how did all of this start for you? Well, I knew someone who had been, their child was affected with autism, and the, uh, the problem just seemed to be coming up so much that uh, when new research came out in November, um, it really stimulated me to try to transfer this gaze tracking science information into a mobile device and uh, so we had a chance at the Hacking Health uh, event at St. Justin's Hospital in February to work on it over a weekend and we put together a working proof of concept and now the energy is just continuing and we're really excited we're getting a lot of interest and support. So this all was born at Hacking Health and here we are still and Montreal New Tech is involved and uh, there's more to come we're looking forward to seeing what happens next. Thank you very much we look forward to it too. Thank you. I'm going to tell you about a revolutionary technology that may make a big difference in the life of someone close to you. Autism is quickly becoming the largest health problem affecting this generation. In 1975, autism was about 1 in 5,000. In 85, it was 2 in 5,000. The next point, 95, it was when I was in medical school. 10 in 5,000, or about 1 in 500. In uh, 2001, it's 20 in 5,000. And 2008, it's 40 in 5,000, or 1 in 125. This graph only goes up to 2009, when it was 1 in 110. In 2014, the CDC announced that it's 1 in 60 kids, approximately. And in boys, it's 1 in 40 with a 30% increase in the last two years. Where will we be in five years, 10 years? Can you see how this might touch someone close to you, maybe their child, maybe their grandchild? The cost of care over the life of someone with autism is approximately $4 million. In the US alone, that's $126 billion a year. Why are the costs so high? Most kids with autism cannot live independently or get a job. Their families take care of them their entire lives. A third of them have seizures. Many have anxiety, depression, and other medical problems. They can't take care of themselves. They can harm themselves or others. 85% of families undergo a divorce of distress for bringing up an autistic child. The good news is that with early treatment, experts tell us that a significant portion of kids can actually catch up with the development of normal kids, uh, typical kids. The yellow line shows the catch-up growth of a kid, uh, with the pink line showing normal neurodevelopmental growth, and the blue, that of a child with autism that did not have early treatment. And randomized controlled trials have shown that early treatment can add 11 IQ points, which is about a whole standard deviation okay, of IQ points, as well as improve, uh, give better behavior. So the first graph I showed you was the scary one. This one, with the yellow improvement, would be the goal. So why can't we get there more often? The problem is that the brain grows 90% of its growth in the first two years of life. But kids currently have to be at least one to two years old to manifest behaviors before they can be referred for assessment. Then they wait one to two years on a waiting list to be assessed. Then they wait one to two years for treatment. So you've missed the whole golden window of opportunity for early intervention. The solution comes from gaze analysis science. So advertisers like to look at our eyes because it tells, okay, you know, we, they can tell all kinds of things by where we're looking. Now research has shown that kids with autism have specific ways of looking at things in videos. But this is not well known by most clinicians. 
So research laboratories use bulky, expensive, high-resolution infrared cameras to track the eye movements of kids looking at video. At the left, you can see the heat map of how a typical child watches a conversation between two adults, mainly their faces. At right, an autistic child is looking all over the place. So you can run algorithms on this pattern to tell the two apart, even from children a few months old. We've taken the theory from eye tracking science, simplified it, and made it usable on mobile devices. The results are a revolutionary diagnostic capability that is simple, quick to use, and fits in your pocket. Little training is required to operate it so we can deploy it to frontline clinicians, like nurses and doctors, other therapists. We can do early screening. It's a software that is safe and fits into the workflow of any clinic. So let's show a demo on the iPad. So you would choose a patient record from the list. And you could see you could see the results of uh, three scans. For example, the algorithms rating you the first scan was at high risk, and second medium risk, and then presumably because of early intervention or treatment, the third one you're now at lower risk. So this is a success. This is a hypothetical success story. And we can go back and look at the raw data from an individual scan, and you can see this is the raw video in the middle with someone looking at a video which was in the upper part. And as their eyes move left and right, you capture where they're looking, and it moves a cursor on the screen. And up above, you have a heat map drawn where the lady was looking. So they were looking a lot at her face. And then you get a, a pre-diagnosis, because the child hasn't yet been diagnosed with autism. It's a screening tool. And you had a low risk of autism in this case. And if you go back, if you want to run a scan, so you hold it up, and the camera detect the eyes, and you push start, and you watch the video, and the camera watches you watching the video, and records where your eyes are moving. And then you'll be able to see uh, the raw data and get the analysis. The project is developing uh, very rapidly. We're growing the team and our advisory board. Uh, we're open to taking an investment capital for growth, and we're growing our IP steadily. Uh, two patent pending submitted already. I've been around the block before, built and sold an award-winning venture by company to a US public company. For NeuroScan Pro, we want to be the standard of care to screen infants for autism risk. And as you saw from the experts, if 10% of kids through early detection and early treatment are made independent, and in North America alone, if you remember the numbers from the first slide, we could save $12 billion a year in that society. And over 25 years, what's really exciting is worldwide, we could get a million kids to be independent. If you have any questions, you can reach me at this email or sign up for updates, uh, jobs, or clinical trials at uh, neuroscanpro.com. I started this project at Hacking Health. That's where it was born. So I want to thank the whole Hacking Health team and infrastructure for the unparalleled visibility this has gotten in a really short period of time. It's attracted a lot of people's interest who want to work with the project and want to support it in various ways, uh, including hospitals, private clinics. So thank you, Hacking Health.